induction, and augmentation. In certain circumstances, medical interventions may be used to start labor or to quicken the pace of contractions. Yeah, prostaglandin is a hormone that your body makes, and what it does is help the cervix get thinner. The wafer is just that little thin thing on the bottom. When mm -hmm. this will absorb moisture from the vagina and get a little fatter, the string is just so we can take it out when we want to, so it's just in a little webbing. So I just need to tuck this up right back by the cervix. Okay, does the string hang? Prostaglandins, also called cervical ripening agents, help prepare the cervix for induction. In the form of gels or tablet suppositories placed in the cervix or vagina, these hormones signal the cervix to ripen and begin dilating. And in someone who's kind of ready, it will sometimes put you into labor. If it doesn't do that, it will at least get the uterus more susceptible to being stimulated with Pitocin. Prostaglandins are often used before Pitocin to induce labor. So, Pitocin, this bag is almost all plain fluid, just like this one was. There's a teeny small amount of Pitocin in there, and I'm going to give you small doses of the Pitocin through this pump here, okay? Really small doses. Pitocin is a synthetic version of oxytocin, the natural hormone produced by the pituitary gland to stimulate the uterus to contract. But now, this like makes the contractions worse than if it was by itself. It makes them more frequent, and sometimes people say that it does feel worse than yeah. it does if you if you had it on your own. It is used to start labor when membranes have ruptured and like contractions do not begin on their own. Pitocin may also be used to increase the intensity and frequency of contractions if labor slows down. Okay. Okay. So you're being officially augmented right now as we swell. It is given through an IV drip. A special pump controls the amount and the rate it is dispensed. Pitocin changes the character of contractions. They peak sooner, and many women experience shorter breaks in between. Adjusting breathing patterns and drawing heavily on comfort strategies helps to meet the challenge of these more intense contractions. If you have Pitocin, you and your baby will be carefully monitored for side effects that include contractions lasting more than 90 seconds and slowing of the baby's heart rate. Okay. Um, <laughs> how, do you, how do I break it? Well, there's a little crochet hook thing that I just reach up there and pop a, like it's a balloon. I just a caregiver slide. may rupture the amniotic membranes the magic, or the bag of waters in an effort to strengthen contractions if labor is slow or ineffective. Artificial rupture of membranes may also be done to insert an internal fetal monitor or to assess the color of the amniotic fluid, which is an indicator of the baby's well-being. To rupture membranes, a plastic hook is inserted through the vagina into the dilated cervix. The hook then painlessly punctures the membranes, allowing warm amniotic fluid to leak out. The procedure feels like a vaginal exam. Take a big deep breath in. Yeah. In and out. It, out. it is common for contractions to feel stronger after membranes are ruptured. Because the bag of waters no longer cushions the baby's head, there is increased pressure on the cervix. You may need extra support from your labor attendants to stay focused and relaxed. IV fluids. The most common reasons for having IV fluids in labor are to prevent and treat dehydration, to maintain blood pressure if regional anesthesia is given, and to permit easy access to a vein in the event that Pitocin, antibiotics, or other medicines are given in labor. IVs are not necessary in an uncomplicated labor.